Well, today is day 31 of protests for Jeff Stop Oil. They began in, on October 1st. Today is October 31st, which is why I'm dressed like this. Happy Halloween. Um, and so I guess to be festive, Just Stop Oil protesters decided today to step up their racket and spray paint buildings in London orange. Take a look. God, what are they thinking? You know, these are the same people that have been throwing soup. Yes. Right? Soup and everything else. How hard it is to, to clean. Now you're making... What are you accomplishing? Well, they this? tell us what they're accomplishing. Um, you know, and even when police are trying to stop them, they feel pretty emboldened by their actions, such as this next lady who just seems like hell-bent on continuing to vandalize, um, even as somebody, a, a policeman or a, a security guard, kind of wrestles her to stop. Uh, take a look at this. Like, where are they getting this paint, you know? It's like, it's all, I, I know you're going to get to this, right? Because this is, I've been wondering, like, where is this all? It's all coordinated somewhere. Yes. Where are these canisters of paint being handed out to these people in the same color? Um, I mean, it's, it's strange where he's like, maybe not do that or me. I don't know. Like there's been some people, many online who are saying that the police seem to be sort of gently removing them or not really helping to get them out of the way. Uh, this is the same group where, uh, a man recently glued his head to this piece of art, the famous girl with a pearl earring in a museum. And that has just continued throughout the month. So not only the traffic sit-ins not only the vandalism, but also the spray painting themselves uh, with art and gluing them to certain, um, it's just, it's a, it's a ragtag of a bunch of stuff that began on October 1st. Now this weekend, the police had to ask the public not to intervene, meaning don't interact with these people. Don't move them out of the way. Don't get in fights with them, no matter how much you want to. The police say that if you move them out of the way yourself or you get into a fight, they can't gather evidence to prosecute them. But also it's dangerous because um, we've showed you some of these protests. And in fact, um, YouTube doesn't really condone us showing you that because it does show people moving each other around and yeah, it we gets got a little violent. Yeah, we got blocked and we got blocked and, and demonetized for showing you where these guys Guys like are like get out of the way get out of the traffic i gotta get to work and you're just sitting here you're sitting um, here and so a lot of civilians have taken to dragging each other dragging the protesters out of the way or out of the road and they just kind of scoot themselves back now they said they had really ramped up their activism uh, before the pandemic and the pandemic shut all that down. So they're ready to come back and show you who they are. But the police say that these people will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law, although it doesn't take very much searching on the internet to find videos where the police are kind of protecting these protesters and allowing them to sit there. But here's a quote from police commissioner, Matt Twist. He, Matt Twist, so many like English things today. I'm dressed as Mary Poppins. This is a British story. The commissioner's name is Twist. Uh, I considered maybe doing this in a British accent, but I'm bollocks do, at that. So. Do, you, do you have any scones? <laughs> no, I don't. Clotted cream. Um, so uh, we can you can have a spot of tea while you. Anyway, the police commissioner Twist. It's just too good. The last name said that the police force is determined to bring to justice all of those who have caused significant and unreasonable disruption to London or caused damage to buildings, property, or valuables. And according to BBC, there has already been 651 arrests in just one month of all of these climate protesters. So we need to follow what happens to them because they are hurting people by making them late for work, especially hourly employees. They're hurting children whose parents can't pick them up on time. That's very anxietizing as someone whose dad was always an hour late to pick me up. Um, that creates anxiety, let people get to their kids. Um, and you know, it's they do already have blood on their hands. For instance, this woman who was killed last week in a traffic incident due to traffic diversions after Just Stop Oil protesters suspended themselves from the bridge, the Queen Elizabeth II bridge, and another man broke his back 
in the traffic diversion that they would not otherwise have been rooted around this had this not happened because you cannot disrupt a whole city without serious consequences to people's lives. Yeah, we remember Bridgegate. You remember what happened when Chris Christie, uh, the whole thing in, in New Jersey? I forgot all about that. Yes. You know, think about what happens when you, for political reasons, you basically shut down a bridge and you don't allow emergency workers to do their job and people die as a result of it. You want to play politics with people. Yes, you're right. That was an amazing story. I totally forgot about that. That's why I'm here. That's why I do what I do. Uh, they say the media is just as much to to blame. That's why just stop oil today vandalized Rupert Murdoch's News UK office today. Take a look at this. Now, I also have an issue with the media. I think that the media regular, but I have the opposite issue as these. They say the media is not showing you the truth. I agree. I think the media regularly embellishes climate stories for their own clickbait uh, to sh and they ignore anything that shows any kind of adaptive behavior on the part of humans to adapt to our changing climate. Uh, we've shown you many such stories. We have shown you many such data. I encourage you to seek them out. But another important question is, Who's behind all of this? Uh, the Guardian has reported that Just Stop Oil is funded by a lot of American one percenters. Shocking. Wealthy Americans who are donating through the Los Angeles-based Climate Emergency Fund, or CEF. Now, donations to CEF come mainly from wealthy individuals and family foundations. The fund was, in, in fact, started with a half a million donation from Eileen Getty, the granddaughter of John Paul Getty, this is the same Getty who has her fortune from Getty Oil. Um, so, okay, why, why are Americans so interested in funding these activist movements overseas? Why wouldn't it be in their own country? Why do this? Because it, you know, it doesn't, well, it doesn't matter where it is. If it's getting media attention, they don't care. I mean, this has no boundaries for them. They can fund this stuff and then, hey, they can go to London and do this. Great. It's not in their backyard. And again, this almost reminds me of like why Congress is ready to fight fight wars in, in Ukraine where we don't have to fight them on our own soil. Yes. Go and deface buildings in London and we'll fund it for you. Like go spray paint, you know, and, and destroy paintings and we'll fund it for you over there. Right. Yeah. There's an ethnocentrism about it. For instance, you know, this weekend, the, the Brazilian election talked about how now Lula will be protective of the Amazon. He will stop deforestation of the Amazon, which is a nice concept, right? But when those places are cleared for farmland, it improves the lives of the poorest people who live there, who live an incredibly tough life. Yeah. And so okay. 75 per 75 million are food insecure in this in the country of Brazil. Right. And farming does raise the uh, quality of life in those places. But guess where? Guess what country is 70 percent deforested? Uh, I, I think I know this. Is it England? Germany. G oh, Germany. So do we, are we anti deforestation in Germany? Because those people have cleared those farmlands in order to farm and raised their prosperity levels. Right. Uh, so should we also fight deforestation in Germany or is it only the brown people we want not to fight, not to actually be able to feed themselves? Right. You can't go back now. No, Germany, it's, they're grandfathered in. They're grandfathered into their own deforestation. Any new people that want to improve their lives, they can't do it. And I saw with this election over the weekend about Lulu, I, Lula, Lula, I saw a number of people like, well, the Amazon, great, because the Amazon is the is the lungs of the world. So thank um, you. That's Lula's not true, actually. Right. Um, it, it, the Amazon is a self-sustaining ecosystem. And that lungs of the world, you, should, you could read Michael Schellenberger's great book about that. And he talks about how 60% of the oxygen that's produced by those plants is then uh, recycled by the respiration of those same um, th those same uh, life forms. And then the other 40% goes into the compost, basically. So like you and I here in Europe are not breathing any right. carbon or, or any oxygen produced by the Amazon. It's the same argument people say, oh, they're the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes, they're the... Uh, people say the same thing about the Great Lakes. Like not, they're like the... the 
I don't know that they provide the same level, like the the Amazon, uh-huh. that the Great Lakes provide. They're like the, it's like the waterways of the world or something. Well, like that. I, I <laughs> definitely think there is water mismanagement in the world, but that's a whole other thing. We've done um, great pieces here about water, and so you know, I think that these people, these just stop oil. They don't really. They just all they want is for politicians to stop new oil and gas leases and for oil and gas to stop. What they don't talk about is how taking away accessible and affordable energy will hurt the poor first and hardest. Um, And it won't harm the people. Like these people seem to have a regular job. They are okay to not, they don't have a job and they are able to just go sit in the road all October. Right. Are they going to be hurt by like, who are these people who have no job to get to and who can just sit in the road? It was the same question for the people that were on Occupy Wall Street, right? Yeah. Who are the people that can just ha- camp out down here on Wall Street and complain? Um, who are these people? Where Do you guys have jobs? Are you contributing to society in any meaningful way? It's Isn't a good- there a Beatles song? Why don't we do it in the road? Mm-hmm. That's Why what they're we doing. Do it in the road? So many English I, I things today, you I guys. Don't, I don't think that that's what they had in, uh, in you know, in their mind uh, about doing it in the road, spray painting things and defiling. De- so. Let's ask Paul McCartney about okay. that. I don't think so. <laughs> Why don't we <clears throat> not do that in the road? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a new song. Okay. Um, here's another thing that really bothers me in addition to the fact that it's orange paint now that is in the environment and then the city will have to now bring out paint thinner which is highly toxic to breathe you think you're doing something good um but the idea of creating anxiety for these young people we continue to be told that young people have increasing amounts of climate anxiety right uh, the wall street journal this morning reporting that more kids than ever are being treated for anxiety or screened for anxiety well why do you think that is are we helping them at all uh, it doesn't necessarily just Uh, blame this on COVID or climate anxiety, but we can extrapolate so many reasons. And these climate protesters are asking us to collectively freak out and say like, you don't have enough anxiety. So I'm going to ruin this art piece that you like. I'm going to ruin your, uh, you know, routine that you care about that brings you comfort. So we can collectively feel anxiety that creates stress for ordinary people it creates more anxiety for children and we, we should be done hurting them after the pandemic. Right. And then again, like traffic jams are also bad for the environment and the incredibly anxietizing. I mean, anybody I hate traffic jams. So yes. now, now I know that like I'm sitting here idling in my car, wasting gas, wasting gas because this that jack, will have to be replaced because this jackass is spray painting something orange up ahead. Yeah. And so, I, I just want to, I'm curious about the mechanics of this. Like, Okay, we know that these guys. Thank you for reporting that. That these guys are funding this, right? So they're this money is going into the, from this from this international fund. But then, how are they? Dis- like, I'm curious about the mechanics of like come here on Tuesday at four four p.m. to pick up your orange paint. Yeah, like who's this- buying the paint? Who and, and then again with these six hundred and fifty one arrests made so far, what will happen to them? Because, you know, are you able to then say you're blood guilty because of these traffic accidents? Will those people be held of course accountable? Not. These people will be left out. They will be, you'll see them on CNN. Who pays their legal fees? This is something that I think is, is worth looking into. So we will continue to follow this story because I, for one, do not appreciate these movements at all. I am not going to get involved in being anxietized about this anymore. Um, and I am in full agreement with Bjorn Lundberg, who today posted on, uh, wrote something in the Wall Street Journal and said, the only way we get out of climate change is to continue to adapt. adapt. We cannot take anything away from people. And this is not going to help. And um, I'd like to tan their hide, is what I would say. Since I'm Mary Poppins today, I'm going to give them a spanking.